Um, good morning, everyone. Um, we are going to start. Uh, We're going to uh, give it up for Gijs Molnar from uh, Spotify with uh, GRPC. Uh, I would like to have Marcel Klassen, if here, can he make himself known to me, please? Thank you. Uh, perfect, thank you. Gijs, yeah. Gijs. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry. Geis. laughs> um, perfect, yeah, thank you for having me. 10, 10, 12, it's early. I'm fresh, you're fresh, so that's good. Um, and I'm going to talk about proxyless service mesh. And, but I'm going to specifically talk about migrations. So I'm Gijs, I'm Dutch, if that's not obvious. I work for about 10 months at Spotify as a system engineer. And I'm also, since the beginning of this year, tech lead of the Hermes deprecation. I'm going to talk a bit more about what is Hermes and, and all the, the pain points we have with this deprecation project. Um, before, I was a research engineer, uh, also a contractor, and I work mostly in science, um, I, specifically in astronomy. And I, I've been a lot in South Africa. I worked in radio astronomy there. And in South Africa, they've been building a huge radio telescope called the Square Kilometer. And I was specifically doing research in uh, large-scale data reduction pipelines, containerized data reduction pipelines. So I, have a, I did a PhD in that. If that's a good idea to build these pipelines that way is a different question, but that's why it's research, right? So, um, so many talks have, a, have, have some quote from a person in it. Uh, I thought it was a good idea to have one also. And I'm quoting Warren Buffett. And I'm quoting him as, it's good to learn from your mistakes, but it's better to learn from other people's mistakes. So I'm this tech lead migration now, so I was looking around at migrations that didn't go flawlessly or, or didn't go very smooth. And in science, there's many, but I don't want to bore you with some obscure radio astronomy packets that we try to migrate away. So I want to focus a bit on Python. And the migration, for, I don't know if, if, if everybody here is, is old enough to remember that, but I think so, if I look around. <laughs> um, but the migration from Python 2 to Python 3 uh, didn't go very well. It took way longer than, than the Guido von Rossum, who's also Dutch, anticipated. So then to quote Guido von Rossum, it, I had no idea it would be so hard or take so long. I still think it was the right thing to do, but it's clear I underestimated the magnitude of the task. Poor Guido. So why do people want to migrate? Um, so often, if you migrate to something, you migrate to something that has improved features or new features you want to use. Uh, it could be that there's better support, paid support, or there's a community with people that you can ask questions about this new thing that you're using. It could be comp compatibility, that this new thing that you're using is way more compatible with all these other things that are also new now. Um, your community could be larger, again, that you just have more people that you can ask questions to, but also you can hire people easier. So if you have new people coming into your company, you don't need to explain all this old, obscure technology to them. They already know this technology, and they can start quicker. But there's also a national resistance with, within every company that has an older stack. It could be that your software is very complex, and it's very hard to adjust. And that's very much the case in radio astronomy, where you have these very old packages from, from the 70s written in Fortran, and you need to modify that. And there's not very many, peop many people that can do that. Uh, it could also be that you have a lack of resources in money or in humans or in time. Um, that is just not a priority now to migrate. And we see that a lot within Spotify, where you know, we know it's important, but it's just there's a lot of other important things happening. That, uh, so this migration does, doesn't flow to the top. Um, and it could also be that it's a lot of people just think it's good that it is now. You, know, you don't need to change because it just works. So if you put this in a plot, then uh, and, and you have this technology is the latest and greatest, and we put this on the right, then you have all these cool new features, and, but it's very hard to, 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 to migrate because it requires a lot of changes. And I would argue Python is somewhere, Python 3 was somewhere there. And on the left, there is technology that is actually might be easier to migrate to, but it has similar features, and it's just not that interesting to migrate to, and there's no need to migrate to because we're already sort of there. So you want to be somewhere in the middle there. <coughs> Sorry. So now I move a bit 
respect to Spotify. So Spotify was the first uh, paid streaming platform. And they were pioneering in this field in that sense. And they were one of the first that solved this problem, or they were the first that solved that problem. And they needed tools that didn't exist yet. So they had to make these tools. With that comes great creative freedom, right? You can do what you can make this because there's no, there, there's nothing there yet. And very smart engineers before us, working there, made all kind of very cool things in encryption, in uh, online streaming compression, and um, it was all very much state of the art technology what they have built. Um, and the tradition within the company was always to um, adopt the latest theoretical things available to us and, and, and utilize that to its full potential. And it's the same with the microservice architecture. Well, as soon as Docker was invented or became popular, Spotify was one of the first to actually f go full on on this, this kind of technology. So there's a lot of these old technologies that we invented, and I'm not going to mention all of them, but there's th three that I, that I want to zoom into because they have a close relationship with um, um, containerized platforms. And they are Hermes, Helios, and Nameless. So Hermes is a protocol invented by Spotify a long time ago, and um, it behaves a bit like HTTP, um, but HTTP was just not good enough. And HTTP2 didn't exist yet. HTTP2 solves many of the problems that Spotify saw with HTTP for back-end back to back-end communication. So it's home build, built on zero MQ, and Protobuf, Protobuf back then was also just released by Google version two. And it supports bundling multiple requests in, in out of order. So this gives way less overhead and gives better performance and, and saves money and, and, and data usage. Another technology we made ourselves is called Nameless. And this is a service discovery service. And it's based on DNS server records. And DNS service records are not that popular. But they're very similar to CNAME records that they create a list of, of host names if you, if you resolve a service, um, but also include a port number. So all internal Spotify services register per region uh, with a nameless instance, and then other services can query this nameless uh, service to, to get all the hosts that offer a specific service. And then we utilize client-based load balancing. So the client decides which service is going to be picked, which is usually round robin. Um, Nameless operates per region, so we have multiple regions around the world. And uh, but if some services for some reason don't run in a specific region, then we can manually redirect traffic from one region to the other. But this is a manual task, semi-manual. It's also important to know that Nameless works across different environments, and that I mean it works with classic VMs and um, um, Kubernetes hosted at Google or at AWS. Or it's completely independent because it's DNS. And the third one is Helios, which is our own homebrew container platform. And we're very proud uh, to, to mention that, and we actually recently discovered this, that uh, uh, a colleague of mine did some archeology span in, in, in programs of, of Docker uh, conferences, and we discovered that Helios was actually announced one day before Kubernetes was. And back then, functionali functionally, they were very similar. Uh, they, they, they are a platform where you can schedule containers, you can s schedule them together, and you can expose them on a network, and you have an API. And, um, but quickly, Kubernetes just became way more popular and took over. So, uh, but up, up to today, Helios is still used, so we're migrating away from it. So but these technologies brought us where we are now. We have a, a worldwide company leading the streaming business, and we're everywhere. Um, but still, the, all these technologies just cannot keep up uh, uh, with, with the growth we're seeing. Another problem is that all these things come with overhead, right? So you, you're the first mover. You create something. You make it. But then you have other people learning from your mistakes. So they create something that is better, and other people start using it that has more momentum. And before you know, you have your own uh, do-it-yourself technical debt. Uh, also, the company 
grows. It keeps on growing, and all the technology that we've built ourselves only goes so far and uh, keep on adjusting so it can keep up with the scale. Uh, many of the tools that we created doesn't have proper third-party support. So, for example, the protocol. There's no packet snivers that un understand uh, uh, that that offer great support for for something like Hermie. And many new developers, including myself, are just not familiar. Like I, I joined Spotify ten months ago, and I have to learn all a lot of these things uh, uh, and reverse engineer my understanding of uh, something like Helios. So I want to move away from Helios. And it, I mean, I already explained it. It's Kubernetes has way more exp uh, momentum, and the Kubernetes is all around us, and all these big cloud providers just offer this as a service. So this is a sort of solved problem. Hermes uh, is also Spotify only, bad third-party support, and uh, but most importantly, uh, it lacks proper support for load balancing techniques, and it, it is not zone aware, or it was not. I'll explain a bit more about that. And also, nameless just doesn't scale. It's hard to add new features, mostly because the response size of a, of a, a nameless uh, uh, response packet is limited to 64 kilobytes, which is absolutely tiny in these days. So what this means is that if you use nameless and you want to use, for example, the, the Spotify playlist API or something, and you want to discover this service, you get back one response of all the services, all the host names that, that represent this service in a region. And but that whole list can only be 64 kilobytes in size. In practice, that means that we can return about eight, 900 host names, but only those host names. And you cannot add additional information or you need to reduce the number of hosts. And it will become a problem if you have so many hosts. So we're really pushing the limits of DNS there. Um, and there are just better technologies available now. Another problem with DNS is that it's actually quite slow. There is a lot of caching happening, which is unknown where the caching happens. You can play with that, with changing with your time to lives and things like that. Um, but that it's just very hard to debug your problem. Another problem we have is the cross-zone traffic problem. So if you go to your favorite cloud provider and you create a new Kubernetes cluster, they advise you to just have three zones and fire up some VMs in, that, in those zones, and, and don't really worry about that. And just randomly deploy your pods over it, and there is some cost involved for interzone traffic, which is about like one cent per gigabyte, and which, which all sounds fine, but this becomes really a problem if you don't think about that and you start to transfer petabytes or exabytes of traffic between your zones. And suddenly, this becomes really expensive. Um, so, we sort of made the mistake by growing and not really thinking about that and planning to migrate, but then the migration took longer. And before you know, this becomes really expensive. So we want to save money also. And so and we, we need zone aware routing. So this was hard to do with nameless. But then I had a colleague who was very smart and he hacked Hermes to hack in zone aware routing. And we're actually uh, deploying this as we speak, we're, 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 and we're saving money as we speak. Uh, we, we merged a couple of pull requests yesterday. But we cannot keep on doing this. We cannot keep on hacking these protocols. It's, it's uh, while there is uh, more robust, future-proof technologies available. So now to service mesh. So for people who don't know what is service mesh, um, service mesh is um, a different way you can manage traffic going through your cluster where traditionally you, know, you have your Kubernetes clusters and you have your pods and if one service you want to communicate with another service, they could just do that. You say, okay, there's, uh, it has a, a, a name you can resolve and then maybe there's a couple of pods. Um, service mesh introduces another abstraction layer in this whole uh, contraption where it has a dedicated infrastructure layer, uh, typically manifested in the form of a proxy. So in practice, this is almost always Envoy. And this proxy downloads or communicates with the central configuration entity called the control plane, traffic director in, in, in this picture. And this traffic director or control plane configures the proxy. And what this 
means is that the client can then be configured to pick specific clients in a specific zone or in a specific cluster or region. Or, and this way, you have way more control over your traffic router. You, know, you, you, you can do zone aware, load balancing, things like that, and fall, fall over to different regions. Or, and even also, if certain zones get very expensive, you can play a bit with the metrics and redirect traffic to certain zones or areas or regions. So th traditionally, a service mesh has been uh, uh, realized with a proxy, um, but the dream <laughs> is uh, the, 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 the proxyless service mesh. Um, and that's the where we're heading to. Um, so what you can do, you can just get rid of this proxy. Um, and But for to do this, you need a client library that is able to communicate with a, a control plane. Now, luckily, all the modern gRPC libraries basically have support for this. So now it's just a matter for us to start switching to gRPC fully. So Traffic Directory is the managed service for service mesh by Google, in case that you didn't know that. Um, an alternative is Istio. Uh, I hope I pronounced it right. I always get a bit confused there. Um, and so you might ask, why don't we use that? So the problem with Istio is that it has multi-cluster support, so we have many clusters per region, um, but we need better support for that. It, 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 more advanced routing techniques that Traffic Directory actually has support for. Also, we have global routing, so we need certain services are really, for legal reasons, for example, bound to certain regions and traffic needs to be redirected in between. And also, we're still not fully converted yet. We still have significant infrastructure running on Helios. So why would you want to go proxyless? Um, well, you ha just have less moving parts, right? You, you don't have your proxy. You don't have this mental overhead. And we actually already do this. We already do, as I mentioned before, we do this client-side load balancing, where we have our Hermes client that gets these nameless records in and decides who to talk to. It's just, it's a bit stupid. This way we can make it a bit smarter. So this whole architecture is philosophically compatible with what we've already been doing. And everybody is reasonably comfortable with it. So what is stopping us in this whole story? So the Hermes GRPC migration is something we are slightly underestimating. It's actually quite hard to migrate a protocol. The, I, I mean, I've not been involved with the Helios deprecation effort. But that seems way more easy, where you just have a container and you move it to a different platform. While here, you need to modify the content of the container and also the, the protocol that, that the containers talk in between. And so there's, there's reasonable resistance within the company, natural. It's not that people don't want to, but it is just, it takes time and effort to m move and, and help all these teams and all these services to integrate a new protocol in their, in their infrastructure. Another problem is that we need to regain trust again after a massive incident. And the massive incident I'm talking about, it gave us the, 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 the honor to be the top one incident at Down Detector last year. So in, in March 2022, we had a global incident. And uh, Google accidentally pushed the faulty configuration to Traffic Director, which was propagated to the whole infrastructure. Um, in combination with that, there was a bug in a library that we used that propagated that error even further. The result was that basically every service within Spotify started returning 404, and as a security measure, every, all the clients were logged out. So we have like a perimeter security check, and people start accessing things that they're not allowed to, they get logged out. So I don't know if you ever realized, but one of the things with Spotify is that you're never logged out. Nobody ever needs to re-log in or type their password. So the problem is that nobody knows their password. So this problem propagated to all the company. Like suddenly you have all these clients, but also artists who are like worried about their income, like contacting, resetting passwords, co co contacting support. Uh, and and th th for weeks, this was shockwaves going through the company. So the rollout to Traffic Director. So I mean, there were only very few services migrated back then, but th some very important services were migrated as a trial project. So that rollout got uh, uh, that, that rollout got rolled back. 
So now afterwards, we sat down with Google and we said, like, look, we really like Traffic Director. We want to use it again, but we need to prevent it happening there. So Google sat down and looked at what happened, and they came up with a couple of solutions to uh, uh, solve, uh, to address these issues. And one of that is just make it harder to make this mistake, not to push a, a, a faulty, faulty, faulty configuration or break the configuration. Another thing is that they introduced canary rollouts in, in regions and they improve the, the, uh, the observability uh, of what's happening. So you have early, early, early detection of if any, anything is going wrong. So to bring everything together, um, to adopt service mesh, we need GOPC. Um, GOPC is a big pickle. <laughs> uh, we should not underestimate the migration. And just asking people internally, it doesn't work. It, uh, Spotify is a community of people, and just asking nicely, it doesn't help. You, ne you need to create a bit of an incentive. So that's what I'm working on now. I'm not expecting miracles, but I just want to make it the, the obvious next way. Um, and we're working on that with certain teams. So we, we're slowly migrating very important services and hoping that has a sort of network effect within the company. So, but I have faith we will get there. So that brings me back to the quote that I showed from Guido von Rossum. So actually, that's a fake quote. It has been created by ChatGPT. He didn't say that, but he could have said that. <laughs> so, so anyway, that was my talk. So thank you. <coughs> I am. I am open for questions, but I'm not sure if I can answer all of that. That's. Uh <laughs> Um, oh, you want to point, or should I so, point, or how um, do we do this? Does anyone? Thank you very much, oh, guys. That yes. was that was uh, amazing, and uh, I really thought that uh, Guido said that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, uh, I fooled you. <laughs> <laughs> does anyone have questions uh, for uh, guys? Yes. Can you keep me on? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, back in the days before service mesh existed. Netflix had a library called Hystrix, and they moved away with it because it was forcing them to do everything in Java and use that library and cause tight coupling. Now you're moving in exactly the same direction. What has changed? Sorry, can you, can you repeat the, the, the one thing? Back in the days, uh, Netflix was using Hystrix as a library yeah. to do the communication between the services and service discovery and all of the things that the service merge does nowadays. Yeah. And they moved away from it because they didn't like that all of their uh, microservices had to be programmed in Java and had a tight coupling with that one library. Right, yeah. But, uh, GAPC is a protocol with implementations in almost all languages, so we're not tightly coupled to Java. And uh, I mean, we're investigating other languages also. We're fully Java-based now with some Python here and there. Um, but the beauty with GAPC is that you can write these protobuf definitions, and you can generate code in almost every language. So we are language agnostic there. That's the important difference. Thank you. Any more questions for, for uh, guys? No? Well, thank you very much, guys, then. <laughs> Give it up for guys, please. Thank you. So we were... Uh, this morning, 15 minutes late with everything. Then we switched into being 10 minutes late with everything. Then Gijs now just brought us five minutes. Uh, so we are in a regression state that is fantastic. Eventually, we're going to get on time to be Touch late again later on. <laughs> um, we are going to have a little break now and start again at 10 past 11. So it's 10 minutes after the schedule. Uh, we are going to have security talks with Marcel Klassen, and I would like to have Marcel Klassen make himself known to